Am I the antagonist for believing my husband over my grandparents? My husband and I have been living with my grandparents for about four months now, just until we could get back on our feet after having lost our main source of income. We quickly both got new jobs, and they are both fantastic. Up until this point, my grandparents and I have always had a great relationship. It's probably the best one out of the family. They helped me through a lot. If someone had told me it would be what it is now, I wouldn't have believed them and would have laughed at them. For the past two months, things haven't been great between the four of us though. Obviously we knew living together would be difficult, but we didn't think it would be this bad. Every one of my uncles and their respective families and my own parents, my siblings and I have moved back in with them at one point or another. And for the most part they have all right relationships aside from my own parents along with one of my uncles, who both had falling outs with them. Due to them believing that my husband, who has been diagnosed with ADHD, is lazy and a liar, things haven't been great. We have three weeks until we can finally get into our new apartment that's been undergoing renovations. Also, we have a debt we owe them, and they refuse to let us leave until we pay them back. I have tried paying them as much as possible weekly, but half the time, they will only take a specific amount, and it's less than what I can pay them. I'm trying to pay them back as soon as possible but they are making that difficult. I'm the oldest granddaughter and have always been the perfect little princess who can do no wrong in their eyes, a title that I do not necessarily love. Due to this unfortunate view of me, they have pinned all of our financial problems on my husband, along with other issues such as our political views, etc. Anything that doesn't line up with what they believe is just my husband's fault in their eyes. My husband has passed childhood trauma dealing with severe abuse in all forms. This is a topic that my grandparents seem to love, throwing into his face. Basically he's saying it's not that bad. Suck it up. You're the man of the house. However, when my own trauma is ever brought up, my mother passed when I was nine, it's well you were a kid. You experienced something no kid should ever go through. My husband and them recently got into a couple of arguments while I was at work, and they really upset my husband because they told him that we won't last 10 years married. That he's a failure. That we made a mistake getting married etc. I had not, up to that point, ever seen my husband that upset about anything, and we've had a lot of trauma the past year. So obviously something was said to make him that upset, and those sound like things they would say. My husband has made it very clear that he doesn't want me involved in the arguments, due to being worried that my grandparents would possibly go after me, and then we would have other issues. Well, now my grandparents are pissed that I believe my husband over them, claiming that he lied about everything and that he's just trying to get attention and playing the victim. Am I the asshole? Not the antagonist, it's concerning that they're trying to control your actions and keep you from leaving. It may be a good idea to start documenting their behavior and interactions with your husband to have evidence in case legal action is needed. Their actions towards you and your husband are unacceptable and cutting contact with them once you're out of their house seems like a wise decision. Their refusal to accept a lesser debt amount is also an indicator of their intentions. Stay safe and do what's best for you. Mom feels entitled to daughter's clothes. I, 17 years old, and my mother, 50 years old, who lives in Oregon, had a falling out this December, and recently she came to visit me and my dad in Texas. I was very worried about this because of her and I having the fight, but she seemed to regret what she did, and was trying to be careful around me for the first day she visited, which I appreciated. The second day she asked to borrow some leggings or shorts from me to go play tennis. I initially said no, as I buy all my clothes myself and am pretty protective over my leggings in particular, which are pretty expensive, and I don't like getting dirty or sweaty. However she begged, so I gave her a pair of shorts to use. She said they were too short, and she needed leggings because of the cold outside, so I found a pair that I would maybe be okay with her using as long as she took good care of them. She tried them on and told me that they were too short as well, and that she needed leggings that go all the way to the ankle instead of to the mid-calf. I argued with her saying that I wasn't willing to let her borrow the ones I own like that, but she started yelling at me and my dad did as well to back her up, saying that I'm selfish and need to hand them over. I told her no, that I had given her plenty of options and that she could choose from those and that it wasn't my fault she hadn't packed any with her. She and my dad then said that I should have let her look through my closet and pick out whatever she wanted and that everyone, like my future roommates and friends, are going to hate me because I was too selfish. I just walked away to my room to cool off. There I found a pair of fleece-lined leggings, which she initially accepted, but she heard the tone of my voice, which wasn't all sunshine and rainbows due to her being so rude to me right before. She said that I was being too rude to her and she didn't need the leggings, anyway, because she could just wear the pair she had worn on the plane the day before. I was insulted by this because if she had a pair why ask me for one? We were both pretty upset and she calmed down-ish and said she wanted to talk to me about how selfish I was being. I told her it's not the right time as I had to get to work and went to go, to which she said FKU to me, her own daughter who she was trying to make it up to. My dad refused to drive me to my work, so I went to bike over. As I was leaving my mom decided to put in one last jab and told me to take off the shirt I was wearing, which she had given to me because it didn't suit her. She grabbed a pair of scissors and said she was going to cut it up, to which I laughed and took off the shirt. 
My dad realized how crazy she was acting and tried to calm her down. She asked why I was laughing and I said and you think you've changed. That's a joke. Anyway, I changed my shirt and was halfway out the door when she was yelling at me more. Then I left for work. Both of your parents suck, OPT you aren't. I'm sorry. Tell your dad that you will have no contact at all with her as soon as you are able, and if he wants to have any sort of relationship with you in the future, he better start supporting you and having your back. Compile a list of all the reasons you want nothing to do with your mom so that you have them handy when you need them. Your dad needs to have your back, your money, your clothes. It is not like your parents bought them. How would she have been if you expected to wear all of her clothes when you visit her? My fiancé brought a dog Nainim against my wishes. My 28-year-old male fiancé, 24-year-old female brought a dog home against my wishes. We have been together for almost six years. We have two children together, and we all live in a house that she pressured me into buying for us. The house is roughly 1,000 square feet, so it's pretty small. There's us, our two small children, and two cats. Around Thanksgiving 2022, a tragedy struck my fiancé's family which left her in a very difficult emotional spot. Her dream is to live on a farm one day and be as self-sustainable as possible, including raising livestock. She learned through internet groups that a great way to protect livestock is through livestock guardian dogs. Around the time of her family tragedy, the farm where she buys raw milk had multiple litters of what the farm owner said were livestock guardian dogs. My fiancé kept asking me to get one of these puppies, but I insisted that a large dog like that wouldn't work for us in our current situation. One day I came home from work and my three-year-old said, Dad, guess what we got? And showed me the puppy that they got from the farm. My fiancé promised me that if I wasn't happy after a few months, she'd give the dog up. But it's been almost a year now and I am absolutely fed up. Firstly, the dog ended up being almost 50% red border collie, which is extremely high energy and not a livestock guardian dog. This dog has dug at least 10 two-foot deep holes in my yard, goes crazy when any other dog or person walks by our house, we live across from a middle school, chases and torments the cats all day, and is constantly running over our two small children, ages 1 and 4. I've told my fiancé countless times how unhappy I am with the dog, but she just dismisses my feelings. She often tells me, you don't need to be me and make me feel like crap about myself. Recently, the dog yet again ran over the baby while chasing the cats around our tiny house, and I told her that I am done settling and want the dog gone. Her response was, maybe you would be happier if you lived alone since you're always mad at me. I've explained to her multiple times that I am upset because the dog she got against my wishes is causing harm to our children, destroying our belongings, and is ultimately a burden we don't need right now. What else am I supposed to do? Then our four-year-old takes her side and tells me to be nicer to mom and the dog. I'm tired of settling, but the thought of losing my family is terrifying to me. First of all, it's important to stop arguing with your wife in front of your kids. A heartfelt conversation where both sides are calmly heard and a plan is made can accomplish a lot. Maybe your wife bought the dog because she just wanted something to love her unconditionally, filling a void of some sort. It's clear that sides are being drawn in your house, but your kid thinks you're mean and your wife is always feeling like crap. Have conversations and stop battling each other's wills. Am I the antagonist for dumping on my dad and telling his wife none of it concerns her? I am a 17-year-old male and I don't have a close relationship with my dad. I would go as far as saying he doesn't even really deserve to be called my dad. My biological dad, yes, sure, he is biologically my father. But he was never a dad to me. When I was younger he was always working or spending time with his friends. He'd go on vacations with friends but not with us. He wasn't even around for my birthdays. My mom got sick when I was 9 and my dad was all emotional about it when he found out. He wasn't around when she was diagnosed, so he was the last to find out. But he didn't change. It was only when she died a year later that he was distraught when she died. He tried to fight over not taking her body and then for three years, he didn't take care of himself and lost his job and everything. His parents helped him pay bills and groceries while my maternal grandparents took care of me. He wasn't around. He wasn't a good dad. He mourned mom and pleaded for forgiveness but never took the time to be a better dad. He just regretted not being better to mom. He slowly got his act together and two years ago he met Helena and they got married a year ago. Helena has two kids, a five-year-old girl and a four-year-old boy. They don't have dads in their lives and my dad has stepped up to be a great dad to the two of them. He takes them to the park, he buys them stuff, he reads to them, helps with her daughter's reading and stuff. All the kinds of things an actual parent would do. All stuff he never did with me. When I saw him do that stuff with them I decided that as soon as I was 18 I was out of here and would never look back. I don't care if he changes now, I won't ever be okay with him being a good dad to kids who aren't his before he tries with me. The only reason he started reaching out is because Helena's daughter wants me to be her brother and seeks me out. So I avoid being around. The few times I was around and she asked me to do something I said no. 
She'd get upset so dad would try to invite me along and when it didn't work, he suggested we have boys nights with Helena's son. Then two weeks ago dad and Helena told her kids to invite me to a sibling movie night and when the kids were out of earshot I told them they are not my siblings and I am not theirs. A week ago dad tried to talk to me about how distant I am and how I refuse to interact. He told me I'm being really hard on him. I told him he was never a good dad to me and why would I give him an easy time. I said why would I like seeing him be a dad to them when he never was to me. He tried to defend it. I told him he isn't even their real dad, but he was mine. Dad accused me of dumping on him. Then Helena interjected and told me I shouldn't dismiss her kids and my dad's relationship like that and shouldn't be so hard on him over it. I told her none of this concerned her and she needed to stay out of it. They told me I was being disrespectful and shouldn't hate that Helena's kids have a dad and I should be glad for them. Am I the asshole for feeling this way? Helena needs to stay in her lane, over there or out of your business. Her kid's dad's walked out on her and she's comfortable allowing a man who opted out of parenting his own kid to play house with hers. Ask her why. Also, ask your dad why he's better at raising another man's kids than his own. I am torn on what to do regarding an ex-friend after calling off our friendship. I, 27, broke off a friendship last year with my ex-friend, 28, after a huge series of events which led me to me calling off our friendship for good. I won't go into details on what happened, but after I said I was done I actually felt better. It felt like a huge weight had been taken off my shoulders, and I was content with how my life was now it was done, and I could continue on with knowing I made the decision to not put myself through those feelings I had put up with for probably way too long. I was content with this being the end, and that being our final time speaking. I told them I was done, and left it at that. My ridiculous worry however which is making me torn is that it is their birthday in a few weeks, and I am torn on doing something as simple as being polite and wishing them happy birthday, or not sending anything at all, as at the end of the day they have not contacted me since I called the friendship off. I don't want to be rude to them, but at the same time I don't really want to essentially initiate conversation, and them to think things can ever return to how they were, and as said, I am content and happy with how I currently am, and do not want to put myself through those feelings again. We knew each other for a very long time, but I just don't know what to do. I'll always be civil should they ever make the decision to contact me. I just don't want them to see this as an opportunity to try again, to try and contact me in the future, because I've made the first move at speaking again, and I have a feeling they may see it this way. Despite the fact they hurt me a lot, never fully acknowledged the fact they hurt me, nor apologized for the more serious things which caused them to hurt me. I don't think of them in any ill way, and never will. If the roles were switched and my birthday was first, I wouldn't think anything of it if they never messaged me a happy birthday. I just don't know what to do about this ridiculous issue, so if anyone had any advice, I'd appreciate it. It's always difficult to navigate the aftermath of a friend breakup, especially when considering whether or not to reach out. From personal experience, it seems like maintaining that distance and focusing on your own happiness is the best course of action. You don't owe them anything, and there's no need to feel guilty or anxious about not contacting them. It's important to prioritize your own well-being and move on fully, looking ahead instead of dwelling on a relationship that may not have been healthy for you. Stay strong and focus on what's best for you. My parents don't like my boyfriend? For some context I am 23, graduated university last year, oldest daughter and family, and working a 9-5 job. I met my boyfriend about a year ago at a party. We dated for half the year before we were official. My boyfriend fell in love with me first and has always treated me well since the beginning. After a few months when we started dating, I would visit him weekends to hang out with him. I have met his parents and they like me a lot even till this day. I have met his siblings and they like me too. Since this year, my parents started questioning who I was seeing and staying over every weekend. My mother asked me what ethnicity my boyfriend is, and I answered Vietnamese. My mother instantly was shocked and angry because she is racist. She wants me to only be with a boy that is Chinese and buys me a car and house. Ever since I told her this information she would not stop lecturing me how bad Vietnamese people are. She would say all these nasty things like Vietnamese people are poor, short, and ugly. This hurt me a lot until this day tonight. My mother would say nasty things. My boyfriend is actually very tall, handsome, and he is a provider. My boyfriend is an honest, caring, and kind person and nobody else knows that except for me. After my first traumatizing relationship, I was single for three years and dating different people because I could not find anybody who genuinely loved me. Until I met my boyfriend last year, he has treated me like a princess since day one. Now the reason why I'm writing this is because I have just let out a massive cry in my room after I just got home from staying at my boyfriend's house this weekend. My parents say all these nasty things because they want me to date someone who is Chinese, so my mom can communicate with my boyfriend in Chinese and their mother. Also, they want a better future for me. My mother is also a narcissist as growing up, she controlled me a lot. I have been emotionally abused by my mother and physically punched in face by my dad when I was young. So leaving the house on weekends is an escape to the toxic household. I also had a massive argument with my parents two weeks ago because they didn't like me staying out at my boyfriend's house. 
My dad tried to kick me out of the house and I stayed over at my boyfriend's house. Then parents turned 180 and forced me to come home which I didn't because it was too toxic. My boyfriend loves me a lot and will always welcome me to stay with his parents if I get a mental breakdown at home or kicked out. Living with my parents is hell. When I am with my boyfriend, I am very happy, and I don't remember all the bad things and trauma that happened in my life. I am sorry this is a lot to read as I am writing this out emotionally, but I need help on what I should do because my parents are killing my head at home. You're 23, financially able to move out, so it's time to set boundaries with your racist toxic parents by physically distancing yourself from them. Move in with your boyfriend and focus on your own happiness. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist in the description.